All right, good morning, crocheters. So today is February, February 1st. I was gonna say February 2nd because it's the second month, but it's not. It is the first, which seems a little bizarre, but we are one month down into 2020. And since it's the very first day of the month, we also have some exciting things to talk about. So I decided today to do a lineup of all the things we have to talk about. That way, hopefully I won't um, forget. <laughs> so we are just gonna dive right in. So the big, well, there, there's a couple of announcements. Very first though, is that today, the baby fox pattern will go up on the website for sale. Um, I'll also later today put it on Ravelry and um, Etsy. So you'll be able to find it in those two those two other locations. So there'll be three spots. Um, so that's exciting for me. Um, yeah, isn't he cute? I'm I'm really happy with how the fox turned out, but you guys know that. I've been talking about it for a while. Um, <clears throat> so, so I'm excited to, to announce that this pattern will go up today. And if you are a Patreon subscriber, um, you, this will be the pattern for the month of February. So, yeah, that's the exciting news there. Um, I can gently set that down. Um, other, I guess, exciting things. It's all exciting, right? Uh, I finally, finally finished the chubby cow. This. This is one of those projects that, because it's small, you wouldn't think it would be as complex as it was, but this one, this is the fourth iteration of the body before I, like, finally got it figured out. Good morning, Adele. Um, so, yeah, if you guys remember, I first, I kind of started the Chubby series. Well, I started the Chubby series with a Chubby Bunny, but then I kind of extended it um, when I decided to make some gifts for my friend and her three children. And so I made her a Chubby Cow, a Chubby Llama, a Chubby Goat, and then she kind of got a Chubby Donkey. Anyway, if you guys remember that was that fast. <laughs> anyway, uh, good morning, Sandy and Emily. Hi. Um, <clears throat> so when I first... Let me see where it's right though. I put it here. So when I first made her the chubby cow, I did I did this sort of a body. So it was um it was worked in circles starting it doesn't matter which end you start from, <laughs> but you know, going going long ways. Um and I ended up so I ended up making a different one, obviously, for her, because this was original, and then I took the head off, because the head was good, and the body was awful, and then I made a different one that ended up going with her, and then I started another one, and I didn't like how it was going, and yeah, so this is number four, so yeah, this is where we are, um, but I'm really happy with it, so I finally got the pattern done, just, um, I finished it, like, late, late, um, Thursday night. So, uh, yeah, it's still very new and I'm very happy with it. Uh, good morning, Rachel and Heather and Claire. Uh, Rachel says, will you eventually make a chubby squirrel or skunk? I do believe so. Yes. I, uh, definitely think I'm going to make one of those at some point. I don't know when, but it is it is written down. Those are on the they're on the master list, the crochet master list. So yeah. I'm really I'm really happy with this guy. Um <clears throat> the I guess there were I was like as soon as I finished it, there were a couple of things I noticed. One, if you can see right here, somehow I got a pen mark on him. I have no idea. And obviously it should be a herb because it has an udder. Um, and when I was very first making the chubby cow, I wanted it to be like a baby. 
So I gave it these little tiny horns, not the really big ones. Uh, and then later I decided to give it an udder, which only like adults, adult females have udders. So it's like kind of confusing because we've got like a baby horns and like an adult udder. And it's like, okay, whatever. I'm not perfect, guys. I'm not perfect, but I am pretty happy with it. I think it's very cute. So that's that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Tammy asks, what color did you use for your fox? I have orange leaf. Um, yes. So um, I, I use pumpkin spice, but I did find some orange leaf at my local Joann's. So let me just hold them up and show you the color comparison. So this guy was made in pumpkin spice, and then this is the orange leaf color. So they're very, very similar. So um, I mean, I would, I would say that the, the pumpkin spice has a, it's a little bit more rust colored. This one is is a little bit more punchy. Um, so yeah, so honestly, they're they're really, really close, and I I don't think that making that you know if you already have some um this one is orange leaf right yeah if you already have orange leaf i would just go ahead and use it and not worry about trying to get pumpkin spice it'll make a very beautiful fox so yes there you go uh claire says two of, of my 12 great grandchildren asked for things very nice good morning dakota one was a cow and the other was a pig perfect well, thank you guys for the love on the cow. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's been really fun to, it's been fun to get figured out or like to actually get finished because it's a little bit of a headache. You know, when you think something's going to be easy like this, honestly, this guy took me like probably twice as long as designing the koala did. Like with all of the color changes and writing everything down, it was a little bit intense. So that's kind of the news there. Um, and then on the koala front, I've had this idea kind of floating around in my mind for a while. Um, and, it, and it's basically making like a YouTube video kind of showing people how they can use one crochet pattern to make multiple items or to, you know, to like, to take a pattern as a starting point and then kind of play with it and have have some fun, make things beyond what the pattern says. And and so I've started trying it with the koala. So obviously you guys um, have seen this is the koala pattern. And by the way, um, I've gotten a lot of the feedback already from the testers. You guys are amazing. Um, so fast, it has been fantastic. And I've been able to update a lot of <clears throat> the issues that were with it because I am wildly imperfect. Um, and so there were issues, but it's it's get, it's coming along really well, getting quite a bit better. And everyone that I've seen the pictures of their koalas, I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. So I'm very happy with that. So this is the, the koala that we're gonna donate the um, pattern sales for the first three months to the wildlife uh, rescue center in Australia. So <clears throat> that's, mm, we're all caught up on that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so what I wanted to do is my, my idea for taking one pattern and using it multiple ways. Um, most of them have to do with scaling the pattern by using just different yarn weights. And so obviously this guy was made out of burnout blanket yarn with, uh, which is super bulky, gauge six yarn or size six. And then I went ahead and I made a koala lovey using the pattern exactly the same as this one, obviously only making the head and the arms um, and then attaching it to a blanket. And so for this one, um, <clears throat> The, um, you know, most of my lovey patterns, I have them attaching using a doll joint. So I'll show you that on our fox lovey here. 
So um, I usually have it attach as, as it's being made with a, a doll joint. And so if you come down here on the underside, there's, there's just this really flat piece of plastic. I, mean, I have heard it that like some people's um, are sharp. Mine are really smooth. So like for me, it doesn't feel like a hazard at all to have for a child because um, it's really smooth. But I wanted to use this example differently just because on, on this koala, like you're, you're using this pattern. And so there would have been no instructions to like where to place the head or how to do things. So I made the arms and I sewed them onto the, the underside of the head. And then I just took a button and I sewed it on there. So I went through the button and then up through the head and then down through the button again. That way it could kind of be um, all attached together. Good morning, Cynthia. And good morning, Tammy. I might have already said hi to Tammy. Either way, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So anyway, that is, good morning, Sandra. So that is kind of what I've been been playing around with is this idea of of taking one pattern and using it multiple ways. So two, so I have two other ideas that I want to do using the same method. So I'll probably talk about those as I um, get them done. Uh, I, will, I, I guess I'm afraid that I will try them and they will be epic failures. And so if I talk about them now, uh, I don't know, I'll jinx it. So I'm going to, to save talking about that for later. We're gonna lose it. Ah, that is the problem with having things like trying to stand up on a slick surface. They're like, we're all just gonna fall over. It was way cuter when I first started this. Now it just looks like a really sad heap of animals. Anyway, catching up on uh, comments over here. Good morning, Selman. Uh, Rachel says you should name him Lewis the koala in memory of a koala ripped from a burning tree. That would be a really good name. I have been trying to figure out what name I should should do, and I just hadn't figured it out yet. Um, let's see. Tammy asks, when are you expecting the pattern to come out for the chubby cow and the koala? So the koala should be coming out. Um, the last day for testers is next Saturday. So I'm going to give myself that week. So probably the 15th of this month, so the day after Valentine's Day is when I will announce the koala release, which is super exciting, I think. I'm, I'm really happy about it. Uh, let's see, good morning, Sandra. <laughs> Cynthia says, Valerie, I finished the koala. Yeah, great job. I mean, this is how they do it in the little rascals. They go, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. It is, it's been so good having so many people working on it and getting the feedback. And it's just exciting. Good morning, Barbie and Denisha. Hello, April. It's been awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Denisha says the chubby cow is too cute. Um, let's see, Rachel asked how many skeins were used for the koala and the fox. The koala, I, um, I didn't actually have two full skeins. I had like mostly a full skein and kind of some of another one and I used up all of it. So I think we're talking about a skein and a half, maybe a skein and a quarter, um, <clears throat> for the koala, but the um, the baby fox, you can get two out of one skein. Yeah, you can get two of them out of one skein because I got, so you guys can see right there, um, this is my very first baby fox that um, I changed the pattern. Um, so I made this guy the final one and the fox lovey all out of one skein so 
you can definitely get either two full baby foxes out of one skein, or you can get one finished baby fox and one fox lovey out of a skein. Um, the final baby fox was bigger than my first draft. If you see them held up here together. So I don't think, I don't think that you could get three. Like, I don't think you could get two of these and one lovey. Um, but I think you can get two of these or one baby fox and one lovey, if that makes sense. So that's where we are. Let's see. Good morning, player A and Tweety Me Too. Let's see. Oh, and Claire is saying, I'm trying to use big patterns to make backpack buddies, and I'm not sure how yet. So actually, Claire, that is one of the other things I'm I'm working on or trying to do. Like I said, it might be an epic failure. We will see, because we never know. Um, but right now, I started on it last night. Let me see if I can dig it out from my project bin. Um... So I started using, this is um, a three weight yarn. Um, so it's, is it sock weight that is three? I can't remember exactly. Um, oh, good morning, Charmaine. So, um, yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a, a backpack buddy out of the three because the lovey was made out of a four, four weight using a 4.2 millimeter hook. And so then this would be the size of the backpack buddy. I mean, obviously I've got <laughs> farther to go, um, but using the, the three weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter hook, and it's working up a lot smaller. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Hopefully that will, um, hopefully it'll work. <laughs> we'll see, right? You, you never know. But that's why we create stuff. We just kind of jump in and see if we can make things work, and sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> Let's see. Barbie says, Valerie, option of small legs slash feet for chubby animals. Um, could you... Let me know a little bit more what you're thinking. I mean, I've got a ch couple of chubby animals, um, like, and most of them just have the the feet as a triple bobble stitch so that it's all kind of one cohesive thing. Um, the idea with the chubby series, honestly, was to try and make less sewing, to try and... Um, and, and to make like small, quick, cute projects. That's kind of the, the chubby, the, the idea behind the chubby series. So let me know what you're thinking, Barbie, and I'll see if I can uh, explain or give you a better answer. Uh, see, Patricia says, can't wait to buy the claw pattern. Thank you. Uh, April says, the fox is so cute. I'm almost done testing the fox lovey. It's coming out so cute. Yes. That makes me so happy. I'm actually really, like most of my loveys, I'm like, these are cute. But for some reason, the fox lovey, oh, I'm very, very happy with it. It might be the, the eyelashes. I think they're just, they just put it right over. Um, <clears throat> Charmaine asks, with your patterns, could I use a, a bulky number five yarn? So you, you can. Um... The only thing, oh, and this is a good time to talk about that. So the only thing that, that can be challenging on my patterns is because unlike a lot of people, I use fleece in my patterns. So I, I mean, not all of them, obviously, you know, but I, I put fleece in the hands and the feet and, you know, in the case of the fox, sometimes like the ears. Um, so if you have a pattern, if you're, if you're using a pattern that has no fleece, it can scale. You can use any size yarn and it will just change how big or how small it ends up. Um, the only thing to note on that is that when you, um, if you use a five for the 
like the majority of the body, then you want to use a size three for making the eyes. Um, so you just kind of scale it that way because it's a because the pattern calls for a six for the body and a size four yarn for the ears. So if you're going to scale down the body to five, you need to scale down the eyes to three. That way the uh, the proportions stay the same. So that's kind of the only thing. And so if you're going to do like a big jump, like I was doing with, you know, this little guy here, that's hopefully going to be a backpack buddy, um, where I went from using a super bulky six yarn to using a size three, like this guy, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to do safety eyes, you know? So that's just something to think about when you're, um, when you're, going to play around with like switching up yarn widths or um, sizes. Thank you, April. Uh, she says the koala lovey is so sweet. Rachel <laughs> asks, what else is in that bin? Honestly, that bin is just, um, it's just my medium weight yarn bin. It's, uh, so it's just got a bunch of medium weight yarn. It's really boring. <laughs> anyway. Um, so Barbie says, I made four different chubby animals for great nieces and nephews. And on the family text chat, they made fun of the feet. It made me cry because I put so much time into them. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Barbie. That is, that is really sad. So, hmm. I, I have yet to encounter that. But, I mean, I have had people kind of say things about my work mostly my younger brother but you know what he's a teenager so we we're just kind of like your opinions don't matter anyway um <clears throat> but that's a good question so my only thought geez where'd it go my my only thought is maybe like taking the uh taking the Penelope pig legs and maybe sewing them on. But right now I can't even see Penelope. I don't I don't know what happened to my pig. Oh my gosh, I sold her. I forgot. I don't have Penelope pig here anymore. But if you go to my website, you can look up Penelope pig and maybe you could see the size of her legs. Uh, and Maybe, maybe that'd give you some guidance. I'm really sorry about that. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say about, about fleece, because we were talking about that, um, because I know that, that quite a few people either struggle finding good fleece or it's hard on their hands or they're just like, I don't, I don't want to mess with that. I want to crochet. Not everyone is uh, like me and wants to have like the mixed media art and have pattern, you know, surface designs in their patterns. That's fine. I like it. I think it makes things like endlessly customizable and it's super fun. And I obviously quite enjoy it. Um, but for those who don't, I, um, I now have on my website, a, um, frequently asked questions tab. And so if you go to that tab, one of the frequently asked questions is like it, um, how do I make a, how do I make a pattern with that calls for fleece without fleece? And I've kind of written up some guidelines on that. So if you just click on the, the link below that, that will take you to just a spot that's, well, it's actually a blog post, but I kind of hid my blog because I like never wrote and I you know, don't like blogging. So um, yeah, so if you guys check that out, that's a good place to, you know, just kind of a reference guide. It'll tell you like if the pattern calls for single crochet 10 into fleece, this is what you're going to do instead. Um, or if it calls for, you know, this or that, or if it's got ears, this is how you're going to do it. So it just, it just gives some guidelines on that. So I hope, um, I hope that helps. All right. Let's see. Do, do, do. All right, reading through the comments. Barbie says, um, I did like the elephant for nose and made my own legs. Very nice. Um, Patricia asks, do you know what size the baby sheep would turn out making it with a three-ply lightweight? Um, 
it's going to be about that big. It, it's going to be pretty little. Um, obviously, this is not an exact measurement, but it's, it's going to be pretty little if you go ahead and make it out of that. Oh, thank you guys for all en encouraging Barbie. That is very sweet. <laughs> and hopefully your family re will realize that they, they are cute. And, you know, if, if you decide to sew legs, that's totally fine. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, C says, I love the fleece. Thank you. I do, too. I know it's not everyone's thing, but I really like it. I like playing around with you know, with, with making, I don't know, different, having different designs within the crocheting. I think it makes a, a really nice, uh, really nice pattern. Fun. As I said, in, endlessly customizable. So uh, Rachel says, I can see you making a T-Rex out of Bernat yarn. It's totally on the list. Someday it will happen. I don't know when. I actually went through and kind of mapped out roughly what I want to get done this year. And I, I'm excited for what's coming up, but I also feel a little bit like, man, I, there's so many other things I want to make. There's so many things. So we'll just see. Anyway, last thing we need to talk about before we go is Christmas in July. And so I've had up for like two weeks, kind of the, the pull between what do you guys want to make? Do you guys want to make the Darcy deer or the large panda? And the Darcy Deer won by 5%. It got 55% of the votes. And the Large Panda got 45%. So this is what we'll be making. So I'm going to go ahead and... I actually don't know when. But I'm going to get started on the tutorial. Probably relatively soon. That way I can take some of the stress off of myself. Um, as Christmas in July gets closer. Because I, I've got lots of things going on in July. So... Um, yeah, so I'm excited to get get going on that. I know people really love the deer. I do too. It was a fun, fun pattern. It was also challenging. And if you guys were kind of around for the the process, I mean, this guy took me almost like nine months to finally get from like the first time I started to to the very end. So yeah, but now the pattern is done, and we can make a crochet along, and it'll be super fun. And we'll have all of that going on. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We'll read a couple more comments before we go. Claire says, I love the small ones because of my energy problem right now. I'm thinking of even smaller sides for the backpack buddies. In two days, I'll pick up some of your patterns. I just love your design. Oh, thank you. And Denise says, Barbie, I've had my kids laugh at some of the things I've made. Take it in stride. They, they laughed. It's all good. Wise words, Denisha. Uh, and Susan says, you need to do a kangaroo. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I would love to. I've already got a name for him. The kangaroo is going to be Joyce. And the baby is going to be Joey, obviously. Wouldn't that be so cute? Joyce and Joey. I love it. <coughs> so, you know, whenever I get those made, that it will happen. I just don't know when. I need more brown yarn too. Gotta go shopping. Anyway. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I should probably head out. I've got lots of things to work on today. But thank you all for uh, for being here. And thank you for being so kind and supportive over here in the chat comments. I really appreciate you guys um, being a community that like builds each other up and is kind and loving. So thank you. Thank you for being you, for being awesome. I'm so excited to, to, to just keep working on crocheting, to come up with more things, you know, to hopefully next week be able to show you a cute little backpack buddy and maybe some other ideas. Who even knows? It's all gonna be great. Um, yeah, love you guys. I'll talk to you next Saturday. Have a very happy February 1st.